active. We had a very active hurricane season in 2017. When September came, we had uh, many storms forming. We had Harvey. Actually, we had like um, 10 hurricanes forming, one after the other. Hurricane Harvey went into Houston and, you know, that part of Texas. And then we had Hurricane Irma, which became a Category 5. It, Harvey was a Category 4, Irma was a Category 5. And that was the first threat that we've had in many years of a Category 5 approaching the Caribbean islands, especially approaching Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. So when we went like from 150 to 175 miles an hour with Hurricane Irma and actually passed about 30 miles to the north of Puerto Rico, on the northeast coast of Puerto Rico, models and the forecast was extremely good. We had a very good forecast for that phenomenon. So we knew that even though it was not coming through Puerto Rico, we knew that it was gonna come close enough that we were going to have some kind of damage. And that was the first punch because we lost um, a lot of, of uh, customers with electricity as, uh, during Hurricane Irma. So it took only like uh, less than 10 days for another phenomenon to be formed, and that was Maria. Maria was coming in a trajectory that was really um, powerful in terms that it not only um, intensified very rapidly, but it also was a very important threat to Puerto Rico. It intensified about 75 miles per hour in 24 hours. So we knew that we were looking at a huge catastrophic, you know, potentially catastrophic system that was really scary. And, you know, I do television, I do radio, I do the, the digital platforms, I do social media. And uh, I, I felt like I needed to do, um, I need, this message needs to be urgent. And uh, what I did, was I, I turned myself into the social media and every three hours I would be on the, like on the air, but instead of on the air, it would be on my social media, providing explanations and helping people to uh, prepare for the storm from September 1st through September 20th. I had 31 million views in my in my Facebook page those Facebook lives saved lives and you know I cannot tell you know enough how important the role of the social media became so um, important in in the emergency management in getting the message out and I am not a news reporter I, I am a meteorologist, but I know how to get the message across. And I, I was a meteorologist, but I was also your friend. And that was very important in extreme events that you are not only the scientist, you're part of the public because you need to translate this information to the public. How, how, would, you, how would you react? If I tell you right now that there's 175 miles per hour wind coming into Puerto Rico, not only that, gusts of 200 miles an hour. You know, sometimes I had to stop just to think about what I was saying. I just couldn't believe. I was just saying wind in the order of 200 miles per hour. So for me, it was it, it, it had an emotional toll. It was a very hard. I got involved in the story. I was part of the story. And still today, it's very hard to get away from it. I can imagine that, you know, you not only do you, do you have to inform these people about the situation, but you're also dealing 
with Hurricane Maria yourself, with your family and your friends. So can you tell me a little bit about how you dealt with it, not only just as a meteorologist, but in your personal life as well? It, it was, I mean, that was the easy part. You know why? Because the easy part is that I am a person that I, I am prepared. My house is a safe house. Um, of course, I have family in my mother, which is uh, an, um, an older adult. And uh, I got my friends and my cousins, my three daughters. I have three daughters. They live in New York. So at least I had the, you know, I, I was... I was relieved that they were in New York because at least I didn't have to think about them and their safety. But I was more concerned of the people that were listening to me because this is what happened. We had Irma and then it, it went 30 miles north of Puerto Rico. Unfortunately, there were two things. One, that people thought that we missed the forecast and that this time the hurricane was going to miss Puerto Rico too. But that was not true because we had a, an excellent forecast and we said, you know, we're not going to get the direct hit, but we're going to get damage. And number two, that because of Hurricane Irma damage to the electrical service and communication service, then we had some people in the population that, that didn't get the messages in the in a continuous fashion or they, they didn't feel the urgency so it was it was a real challenge to get people to understand what we were about to face and to take action and believe me in order to prepare for a category four or five hurricanes you need more than two days and and you know it, it was it was a struggle for me to get the message out but still still with the struggle and the challenges i think that people appreciate appreciate what happened during that, that time frame and they're always thanking me for the job that i did during that period of time previous and during the path of hurricane maria